It's Doc Talk. Uh, we're in January and uh, getting near the end of January, a very eventful time uh, with health related topics across the globe and in this country. Uh, and generally here, as we have been promising, we're talking good news uh, rather than rather than the next thing to be warned about. So here's what's going on. Um, it's winter time. Um, and a really good part of the winter this year uh, is precipitation coming down on the West Coast. Now, it has been very difficult because in some cases, life-threatening um, flooding uh, and, and similar, but we have been in such a severe drought in the Western part of this country. And what they really need are good, heavy winter uh, rains and snows uh, to put a snowpack in place. Uh, for the western part of our country to uh, have water uh, for years to come. And boy, are they they getting the precipitation. So uh, good snowpacks uh, across the west. Unfortunately, some flooding in California and related areas on the west coast and um, and rescues and, and other trials related to that. But for the entire country, the west coast having water is really important to all of us. Number two, um, we've had snow events moving across the country, including my areas, and cold weather surges, uh, and still very dangerous out on icy roads, icy sidewalks for both our, um, our, our communities and people in them, and for our crews who are trying to get through snow and ice to get to people, and in some cases, uh, people then plow into them. Uh, so a reminder of the, of the usual winter uh, challenges. Uh, we've also had a couple of, uh, of very notable carbon monoxide incidents um, for blocked vent pipes and malfunctioning heating equipment, making people sick and dying. Uh, so wintertime uh, ice and snow and uh, treacherous movement uh, and then carbon monoxide. Uh, so be aware of all those things. Infectious diseases, uh, monkeypox down, uh, measles still a risk. Please, your children need to be immunized for all of the usual uh, pediatric uh, immunizations that make their lives much better. Um, so uh, the children need to be vaccinated. Uh, and uh, in the event that you're exposed and have a weird rash, uh, we have measles and mumps and other things that are breaking out in certain areas of the country. Uh, that we need to be aware of. For the emergency personnel, someone with a weird rash, one person within the six foot radius, PPE in place, um, don't expose more people than you need to. Um, warn the emergency department that you're coming in with someone with an unusual rash and some other symptoms that you're worried about. Our respiratory season is extending out, but got to tell you, the polar vortex uh, uh, conditions that came through uh, over the holiday really took a lot of this strength out of RSV, flu, and COVID uh, outbreaks. That was really timely for our community. Made it very difficult for people to get together for the holidays. And we were part of many celebrations that got broken down because the weather was way too cold and there was ice and snow. But keeping people home for two or three or four days unexpectedly breaks the chain of transmission of respiratory infectious diseases. And it seems to have done that uh, for the big three of this year, RSV in children and in, and in adults, uh, influenza across all of the age groups and COVID. So what happens is people stay home, even though they have the bug, they don't have other people to give it to. Uh, and and the transmission of it across communities, school systems, workplaces, at the mall, uh, et cetera, uh, really, really gets broken. So we've looked at decreasing incidents across the country of all three of the big diseases. What is coming, though, is potentially this. Uh, we sometimes have a resurgence of influenza later in the winter. What that means for you is if you haven't had a flu shot yet for this year, it is wise to still go get one and to look for one and get it if you haven't had it. 
for you and for your family members who are at risk. And this year it's all population groups, all age groups at risk. Uh, so think about getting flu vaccine even now in January to protect you. So the overall incidence of flu is going down. The, the CDC flu charts look really good uh, for these past couple of weeks where we went from tremendous incidence of the flu in November and December, and now we're down uh, very much across the country. Occasional little regional outbreaks, uh, but at this point, flu is going down. It still can surge again towards the end of the year. Two strains for the medical people, H3N2 and H1N1, uh, that are both influenza A, very, very small amounts of influenza B. Uh, all three of the circulating variants this year are matched by what's in the vaccine, which is a really good thing. Talk about RSV. So RSV typically is a wintertime illness in kids. It came really early this year as kids went back to school. So we had tremendous surges in September and October uh, into November. It exposed a lot of children to the, the, the virus RSV. Um, there were a lot ill, and we really stretched the resources of our children's hospitals to take care of all of those sick kids. We still have RSV circulating, but at much less of numbers. Uh, and very honestly, we've exposed so many children to it that it's unlikely that it could get a big surge back up. Nonetheless, you should expect uh, that come the early springtime, we'll have another little bump in RSV cases. Because of course, one thing about children is we keep replenishing the population. So as we keep having babies uh, across uh, you know, the, these months, um, new little at-risk individuals keep coming into play. And so I just wanna make you aware as the numbers would go up in the springtime, not unexpected. Uh, and uh, we're at a point where our children's uh, hospitals are back in shape to be able to receive those patients. Then COVID. Um, COVID, we have new variants uh, moving through the country. Uh, right now, the leading variant in the country is known as XBB.1.5. Um, it's uh, infectious, seems to be the low acuity that is that has marked the recent uh, variants that have moved through. Uh, so fewer people have gone into the hospital, fewer people have died. That's all very good after we had a tremendously challenging 2022 and the numbers showing up said uh, 2022, uh, COVID deaths were very numerous and pushed up our overall death rate and lowered life expectancy in Americans in 2022. So that was very sad news. As we move into 2023, XBB and the other variants that are, that are, that are beginning to show up in the country, not, at this point showing any signs that they are more dangerous in terms of killing people. Uh, a lot of news about the COVID vaccines. Um, a little blip that got some media uh, coverage was that it looked like one of the bivalent vaccines uh, was showing a little higher trend in strokes in the first month after vaccination in a certain population. Uh, so they took an early look at that got a little signal that maybe something was going on with strokes in that population. And then with larger numbers of cases that have been studied now, both in this country and another country with the bivalent boosters for COVID, it has shown that that signal was not true. And so the bivalent boosters have shown very significant impact on reducing hospitalizations and reducing deaths. So that's good things and it is not showing any higher rate of any complications, including strokes. Um, so for those of you um, who haven't had a vaccine in the last six to 12 months, um, if, you're, if you're timely for a vaccine now, uh, getting a bivalent booster, either Pfizer or Moderna, um, is still a very good idea. The Novartis vaccine is still available. It's not particularly a bivalent, uh, but Novartis uh, vaccine, a different type of vaccination, uh, still very appropriate uh, for Americans uh, six and older. 
So we have good news um, on, on the hospital side in terms of reducing the number of respiratory infected patients who are coming into the hospitals. Many of your, your community hospitals still stretched because of um, some lagging diseases that have come along that were, that were less during the epidemic and now are coming back. Uh, we still have GI diseases, and that's probably the biggest infectious disease moving through the country now is GI stuff. So that's the 24-hour throwing up, diarrhea, no fun um, uh, bug that is moving through. And it moves through workplaces, it moves through recreational places, it moves through schools. Uh, but that's that's a short-term, not associated uh, really with making people die or getting them very, very sick. Occasionally, somebody gets sick enough, they have to go in the hospital, particularly if they have an underlying problem that leaves them prone to dehydration. Um, and as we move into the spring, we'll have little blips maybe of uh, flu and of RSV, uh, perhaps of COVID, uh, but nothing that stands out as being very dangerous, nothing that should stretch our healthcare system. And the work over our spring and summer is likely to be to rebuild our healthcare system, rebuild our hospitals, rethink how we are managing our healthcare resources in this country, um, look for uh, ways that we can prevent further outbreaks. So looking into the fall and the headlines will be uh, for the fall, can we combine the vaccines for, for COVID and the flu into one injection or one nasal spray uh, by the fall. There'll be a lot of headlines around that. Um, number two, will we see anything else? And you see every once in a while little bumps in strep. And we talked about bumps and measles and mumps and getting people back into the process of getting their regular immunizations, getting their cancer screens and other things. So kind of rebuilding um, our health system around good health into the future. Uh, but into the fall, protection from respiratory and other infectious diseases for all of us. Uh, and then uh, kind of getting back to normal um, civilization. Um, supply chains coming back together, automobiles being produced with microchips in them, uh, et cetera. All good news uh, as we head into warmer months. Uh, might be time for vacation uh, and um, to revisit people that you haven't been able to see for the past few years. China is still a hot spot. I got I to tell you that people coming from and traveling to China, they are still in their, in their COVID uh, outbreak time. So it's probably not the time to go there. Uh, but many other places uh, that you've been looking to go to for the last four years, but haven't been able to uh, because of uh, COVID, um, might be the time to think about that. And for us to uh, move into much better times in the country economically, socially, um, and, and entertainment. So enjoy the rest of this winter. Stay safe from the usual winter stuff. Um, consider getting a vaccine uh, for flu and for uh, COVID if you need those uh, right now. Uh, keep the kids safe uh, around other sick kids. Enjoy your time. Doc Talk, end of January. Enjoy your time. Talk next month.